So hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, we are going to solve the question perfect numbers. So first of all, let's try to understand the problem statement and then we'll have a look at the approach. Let's start. So in this question, you will be given a number n and you have to check if the number is a perfect or not. And it has been mentioned that a number is said to be perfect if the sum of all its factor excluding the number itself is equal to the number. And what you have to do, you have to return 1 if the number is perfect, otherwise return 0. So let's try to understand with the help of the example. So over here, I have taken the same example given to us in the input. So for n is equal to 6, the output comes out to be 1. So let's understand how the output comes out to be 1. So I'll note down all the factors of 6. That is 1, 2, 3 and 6. And what you have to do in order to check if the number is perfect or not, you have to sum up all the factors excluding itself. So I will not include 6 and I will sum up all these numbers. So 1 plus 2 will be 3 and 3 plus 3 will be 6. So I can see the number itself is equivalent to the sum of all the factors. Hence the output comes out to be 1 that denotes 6 is a perfect number. So let's try to understand the second example. What will be the output? So I will note down all the factors of 12 that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. And let's try to find the sum of all the factors. So I will exclude 12 and I will sum up all of them. So 1 plus 2 will be equivalent to 3 and 3 plus 3 will be 6. 6 plus 4 will be 10 and 10 plus 6 will be 16. So I can see the number is not equivalent to the sum of its factors, right? Hence the output comes out to be 0. So 12 is not a perfect number. So I hope you understood the problem statement. So now let's try to focus on how to solve this question. So let's try to understand what can be the brute force approach. So in the brute force approach, what we can do, we can try to find out all the factors. So basically I will iterate over all the numbers starting from 1 to n. So let's say if n is equal to something like, let's say if n is equal to 12, what I'll be do? What I'll be doing, I'll be iterating over all the numbers starting from 1 to n. i is lesser than or equal to n. And what I will check? I will check whether i is divisible, whether i is capable of dividing n or not. So I will check if n is divisible by i or not. If it is divisible, then I will add up the number to the sum variable. So I will iterate over all the numbers and I will get the sum of all the factors. And at the end, I will check if n is equivalent to sum or not, right? So what will be the time and space complexity of this approach? So the time complexity of this approach will come out to be order of n and the space complexity of this approach will be constant which is which will be order of 1. And now will this approach work or not? So for that we need to have an idea about the range of n. In the quotient it is given that the range of n is from 1 to 10 to the power 12. And now let's say in the worst case scenario n is equal to 20, 10 to the power 12. In that case this approach is not going to work. So we need to optimize this approach. So let's try to understand the optimal approach. So in the optimal approach, what I will do, I'll take different values of n and I will be finding out all the factors. So let's say for 12, the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12, right? So let's take one more number that is 15. So all the factors of 15 will be 1, 3, 5 and 15, right? So now over here, what we are trying to do, we are trying to iterate over all the factors. But let's say if the number given to you is n and a is the factor of n. So what we can write, I can say that a is a factor of n. So that means that if I divide n by a, I will get a number b. So I can say that b is also a factor of n. So now let's say if among all the factors of n, if I find all the values of a, then I will be able to derive the values of b, right? That means I will be able to derive the values of b. So in this example, where I am finding all the factors of 12. So if I'm calling this one as a, if I'm saying that this one is a, then I can, I can call this 12 as b because Let's say if n is equal to 12 in this case and a is equal to 1, then that means 12 divided by 1 will be equivalent to 12 and this is your b. 
Similarly, if I call this A, this will be your B. If I call this A, this will be your B. So now I simply need to iterate over this many factors. I simply need to iterate over all the A's of 12, right? And I will be able to derive all the B's just by dividing the value of N by A. So how many A's are present in a number? So let's try to find out that value. So what I will be doing, if I take the square root of 12, if I take the square root of 12, I will be getting somewhat around 3.46. So all the numbers starting from 1 to square root of n, all the numbers starting from 1 to square root of n will be considered as your a. And in this range, if, if you find any number which is divisible by, let's say, n, then you will be able to find out b as well. So if I find a, then I will add, so if I find a, then I will add a to the sum and I will also find b and then I will add b to the sum as well. So let's try to find out. So instead of iterating over the entire range starting from 1 to n, what I'll be doing, I'll be iterating over 1 to square root of n. So basically my for loop will be running from i is equal to 1 to i is lesser than square root of n. So this is my for loop and now what I will, I will be doing, I'll be checking if the number n is divisible by i or not. If yes, then what I will have, I will have my sum variable that will be initially 0 and I will add that number to sum. So sum plus will be equivalent to i. So this is my value a, right? Now I need the value b as well. So what I will be doing, I will be simply adding sum plus will be equivalent to n divided by i. So this will be my value b, right? But I cannot write down this directly because let's say i is equal to 1. In that case, your a will be equivalent to 1, right? Your a will be equivalent to 1 and your b will be equivalent to 12 and that is equivalent to your number. When n is equal to 12, this will be your scenario. And for a number to be perfect, I'm not adding the number itself, right? So I need to add a condition that if n divided by i is not equal to n, then and only then I will add b to my sum. So this is going to be my logic, right? So let's try to solve for n is equal to 12 and get our answer done, right? So for n is equal to 12, square root of n, that is square root of 12 will be equivalent to 3.46. So let's say i is equal to 1. I can see i is lesser than 3.46, right? So I will be checking whether 12 is divisible by i. Yes, absolutely. So what I will do, I will add i to my sum. So sum will be equivalent to 1. So here is my sum variable. So sum will be equivalent to 1 now. It, initially, it was equivalent to 0, right? And now what I will be doing, I will be finding 12 divided by 1, whether it is equivalent to 12 that is n or not i can see it is equivalent to 12 so i will not add n divided by i i will not add it to this i will not add it to the sum right now let's say i is equal to 2 so basically that will be 12 divided by 2 i can see this will give you 0 so i will add to my sum so this will be 3 and now what i will be doing i will be dividing 12 by 2 and i will be checking whether b is equivalent to n or not i can see this is equivalent to 6 so i can add 6 to my sum so that will be 6 plus 3, 9. So our sum will be 9. So moving on ahead with 3. So your i is equivalent to 3. And I can see 3 is still lesser than 3.46, right? So 3, basically let's check. 12 modulo 3, it will be equivalent to 0. So I will add 9 plus 3, that will be 12, right? And so now over here, I have divided, I have divided 12 with 3. So 12 divided by 3 will be equivalent to 4 and now I can see I can add 4 to this 12 and the sum will be equivalent to 16, right? So now moving on forward with uh, the next value, so I will be equivalent to 4 and I can see this value is greater than 3.46, so I will not consider the values after i is equal to 4. So now my sum is equivalent to 16, right? So I will be checking whether this sum is equivalent to like let's say n or not. So I can see this sum is not absolutely equivalent to 12, right? This is not equivalent to 12. Hence, the output comes out to be 0. So this is the entire optimal approach. And what will be the time and space complexity of this approach? So the time complexity of this approach will be order of square root of n. 
and the space complexity in this case will be constant. So we have optimized our brute force approach and the time complexity has been reduced down to square root of n. Why square root of n? Because this iteration is going till square root of n only, right? So now let's try to focus on writing the code for the same. Let's start. So over here, I'll be implementing the algorithm in Java programming language, but the same can be implemented in other languages as well. So let's start. So I'll be using a sum variable. Sum will be equivalent to zero and I will be iterating from i is equal to one to i is lesser than square root of n. So math, math dot square root of n and I will be incrementing the value of i. So let's change this n to small n, right? And I'll be checking if n is divisible by i or not. If n is divisible by n, the i, then what I will be doing? I'll be adding that to my sum. So sum will be equivalent to i. And I'll be checking one more thing. So I'll be checking for b as well. So I'll be checking if n divided by i is equivalent to n or not. If this is equi equivalent to n, I'll be not including it, right? So if this is not equivalent to n, then what I will be doing? I'll be adding that value to my sum. So n divided by i will be added. And at the end, what I need to do? I simply need to return the value of sum basically i need to check if sum is equivalent to n or not right so sum is equivalent to n then i will be returning one else i'll be returning zero and i will be returning this statement right so let's try to compile and run and let's try to submit the solution and we can see that the problem has been successfully submitted so that was the coding implementation part and algorithmic part for the quotient perfect numbers i hope you understood the question and if you really enjoyed the solution, then do hit the like button and share it with your friends. So that was it for in this video and let's meet in the next video. Thank you.